welcome to Game Brain, a board game podcast about our gaming group. I'm your host, Tom Donnelly, and I'm here with Trey Alsup. I am here. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. This is me excited. Okay. It's just the two of us, Trey. <laughs> just you and me. Two of the more opinionated, more cantankerous hosts of this fine, fine podcast. I was going to sing. Really? Well, I was afraid of a copyright strike, but I would actually have to sound something like the song itself for oh, yeah, it to yeah, trigger yeah, a copyright yeah, yeah, strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you're probably, you're probably okay. I'm bailing. I'm All right. Ba- bailing He's on the bailing it. He's okay. bailing on that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we can bail on that because we got a lot to talk about. We don't have a lot of time. We got, we got places to go today. Got a friend. Busy hot Saturday in it Southern is. California. A lot of things going on. Um, but we are going to be, why bury the lead? We're going to be talking about uh, a game that we've played quite a bit of in the last month or so. Uh, Great Western Trail, New Zealand. This is the third or fourth iteration, depending on whether or not you want to consider Rails to the North in I- a full iteration of the game. I frankly do. I think it's a, a very significantly different in terms of the way it, it makes the game play. Um, and uh, we have a lot. We have a lot of thoughts and a lot to say about this thing. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about what we what else we have been doing and playing lately. We had a big uh, weekend. We had the uh, Labor Day weekend. We did. Uh, we went to the. It was an old school local convention. L- yeah, old school L.A. Strategic Con. Yep. Weekend didn't get COVID. Yeah, we don't. (laughs) Unlike some other people, we did not get COVID. Yeah, I think I think only ninety five percent of the people that went there got COVID, and uh, we were the five percent that didn't. I brought a HEPA air filter, and I had it blasting right next to that must have been table. I don't know, but it didn't hurt. Okay, didn't hurt. Every time I was away from that table, I had a mask on. Every time I was at that table, I'd take the mask off. And there were there were people that passed by and looked at the filter and just looked at me and were just like. Dude, okay, yeah, yeah. That was jealousy. I see that. Yeah, they were. They, they were like, that's some, that's game. They they were jealous, or they especially were just, given the parking situation at the at Strategicon, right. like you know, actually, you know, slinging around a large HIPAA filter. Not not an easy thing to do, but no. you know, I'm, I'm I'm certainly lugging around a whole bunch of games too. We did a, a Matt and I did a lot of game sales. We are trying to make our collections manageable. So we had kind of a convention weekend, which is we both had a game day here at the office on Sunday, and we all went on, or a lot of us went on Saturday to Strategicon, which is a convention we've gone to for decades now, but like... Things definitely slowed down during COVID. We didn't, have, we didn't have a full game day on Sunday. Like yeah. so, sometimes our game days are big and huge and things like this. This is more of a small affair. But we kind of counter program sometimes. A little bit. A little the bit. logic being, why should we have to pay for parking, pay for a badge if we're just going to go down to the basement and play board games with each other? Pay twenty five dollars for a panini I have to wait an hour for. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So why do that? Well, this time, what a lot of people wanted to sell games. Yes. Yes, we wanted to. We wanted to sell some games. I, my goal in this hobby uh, has changed over the years. It started off being I wanted to have a game for every occasion. That was kind of what I came in with. I like I would like to if somebody says I would like to play a game. I don't know if it exists, but it'd be kind of like this. I say yeah, I have this game for you. Here we go. That's a great idea for a segment on a podcast. A game for yeah, like you know, see game smally kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it very much so. So if you look at my collection, it's got a lot of things like wow, I wouldn't have thought you would have that. It's because I want to have a game that in that category and that 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 fits that particular niche. Over time, as my collection has grown and grown, uh, that has changed a little bit. And now my goal in this hobby is to never have to rent a storage space. <laughs> Right, <laughs> which you've done before, or I have never done it. But like you've got some boy, space out close. by your behind your car in your garage or I, something. And consi- that- if if any game ever goes down there, I it's consider over. that a fail. Yeah, that is a fail. That will be. But bad. for a while, for a brief period of time, I did have some in my own storage space, which I already own, so I'm not paying for it. I had some games that would go that would be uh, uh, consigned to yeah. the oblivion that is that space. Yeah, when I when I collect games, it's even dumber because like the games I buy. We don't actually play like oftentimes I will buy games and I will just come in here and, and put them in your office because that's how they actually get played. Yes. If they sit in my in my apartment, they won't get played, but I'll have them near me and I can look at them. <laughs> and then there's kind of what you were describing there, which was yet another step, which was the hey, I can't this doesn't fit in my office anymore. So I'm storing it behind my car on shelves in the garage. Ooh. And like that's just the intermediate step to 
just throw, the throwing goal. them away, or or I should go to Strategic Con and sell them. Yeah, to sell my dusty yeah. old games. That, that that is the land of misfit games, right there. That is that, that's. Um, what, which was it? Was it Toy Story three, where the the toys that nobody wants anymore have to go <laughs> yeah. there? That's what yeah. that sh- that's what the shelf in the that's garage. A terrifying scene, and yeah. I can't do that to my board games. You shouldn't do that to your board games. Like I've got good, some good games down there, like like Village. Like that's a good game. It's a fine game. It's a good. It's a good game. It really is. It's it's a good game. But I think Nations is down there. Like Nations, Nations is a good is a, game. Nations good game. Is a very good game. No question about it. And yet things are gonna things are gonna end up. But there. once it goes there, it's just gonna sit there. I don't have your copy of Nations. I don't think I have, maybe I have a second one. Okay. Maybe it's I also have Nations the Dice Game, which for I liked at one point and was wrong about. You liked the Dice Game. You bought I, the it first dice time game? I played it. Yeah, Trey I bought it at bought BGG. It. I bought it at BG. The first time I went to BGG Con when when you it was still something at, that said colon the Dice Game. Yes. Wow. I thought it was an appropriate use of the dice. Wow. I am not completely anti-dice. I just think they get used incorrectly 90% of the time. I don't hate all blank. <laughs> just most of them. <laughs> it's one of those dice games um, like, uh, what, what's the one where you're King of Tokyo? Yeah. Where you, you roll the dice, then that determines what resources you have to do the things you're going to do. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's not, it's, it's input randomness. It's not output randomness. So it's like, here's ready, this little ready, puzzle. Set, yeah, here's this. Uh, that's different. I, I think Ready Set. I like Ready Set. It's randomness. fine. I like that people like it. It's input randomness. It isn't. Uh, it's it, a constant. It's a because there's so many of them. Like, yeah, it, it, there's plenty of output a, randomness. You get near sure. the end, and especially like one, once the decision window is closed, it's just output randomness. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But but the but during the bets, like you're not placing yeah. a bet before the input randomness happens. So that's right. It is complicated. It yeah. is complicated. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. a lot of games were sold. A lot of games. Were no sold. help. No thanks to David Gillison. Look, friend and friend of the podcast. Who I'm going to go with friend of the podcast right now because <laughs> literally. Uh, so I'm. I sell games two ways. I do the virtual flea market, which if you have never done a virtual flea market, you should absolutely do it. What it is is and just killed it. Though. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You go on the geek. You list your games. You say they're for pickup at this convention. So nobody has to pay shipping, and you can either put a BIN, buy it now, or you can put an SB, which is starting bid, and just let it go and see what you get. And I sold um, half of my games that way and then half just uh, at a manning a table for a little bit. And for the first half, I had to be waiting for people to come and pick up their uh, virtual flea market games. So uh, I finally, an hour later, I come over to the table and there's Matt. I said, how's it going? He goes, eh, not so great. How many games do you sell? He goes, well, I sold, you know, five or six. I said, how many of mine sold? He goes, none. <laughs> and I look at him, and I look over at Dave Gillison, who himself is trying to sell four games. Now, I'll use the term game, but they were... Kickstarter mistakes. They were not good. They were not. Okay. He, did, he, did, he was not selling anything of value. He, sold, he had a few games to sell. And then I see a minute later, I see a guy come over and looks at my shrink wrapped copy. I have a, a couple couple games that are still in shrink because we will buy, we will all kickstart the same thing. We will all be playing these games. And sometimes I don't actually ever need to open mine because Ben always brings his copy. And when we go to Match Place, we play with his copy and so on and so forth. And mine never, mine never gets opened. Uh, touching, a person is touching my shrink wrapped copy of a game and david's like have you considered this and draws his eye over to something he is never buying it has no interest in just just oh just the worst the worst and so it was funny to me it was i thought it was pretty funny the, the flea market so thing so. um you texted me at one point like go help candace yes and candace was pulling up to the to the con 40 games easily yeah and she had like a cart Yes. And you go into this room that is just shoulder to shoulder, full of buyers and sellers exchanging things. And she had this mostly COVID cart yes. and three bags. Yes. Like imagine three bags over your shoulders, plus pulling a large cart. And this cart was like the cart of holding where like people, <laughs> people would come up and say, I need this and this. And you would just see Candace's arm disappear into, yes. you know, like up to her 
yeah, up to her shoulder. And, and out would, comes they, a bicycle and a giraffe and a right. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, but yeah, but there would be like, oh, that game because she buys so many yes games. Yes, but and she's like, oh, I have to get rid of all of these games. But like for every game that left the card of holding. Another game Another went into the card of holding. Yeah, I noticed that. I talked to her about that. Uh, sh- no, she she got rid of many more games than she bought. That is for sure. Uh, but she did buy a bunch of games, including Crisis, one of the games that was one of our uh, little hidden gems that Ben brought to our attention. We played a bunch of times and, and reviewed. Matt had never played it. We played Candace's copy. Had a blast. Had a blast. It remind rem- people what Crisis is, or me? Remind me sure, what Crisis sure, sure. is? It is a Eurofied game about a future society called Axia that is collapsing. And we are p- picking up workers, domestic and foreign workers. We are picking up companies. We're picking up farms and power plants. Right. Like, and I do like remember that. this game. Like, to me, this, this fits in the almost in the hegemony category which is you're kind of like running a society a and so there's a little bit, bit of a semi-co-op which is that the what the government can fail correct and is that the end of the game yes if the government fails it, it'll last seven turns if you can keep the economy running if it if not it collapses before that point um uh, people thought that the game for sure was going to end on turn three in our play uh, on uh, last weekend and it didn't we all saw oh my god oh my god because if you end up below the target for the societal output... Your society is in crisis. If your, your society is in crisis, if you don't get enough victory points in any given round to meet the target of that society, uh, your society is going to drop. And it was, gonna, it was down to, on a 30-point scale, it was down to five or four. So it was four more points, and the game ends. And only people who are above the target mark right. are eligible to win at that point. So everyone was racing to get above water. So you're kind of having to make this minimum contribution to society or else you kind of take yourself out of it. You, and there are advantages to not contributing to society. You get double the money if right. you don't do that. Sounds like money something Paul is super would important. Yep. Yeah, Paul breaks that game. Yep. Yeah, you can't play with Paul. Uh, but you have played this game now where the society does not fail. Like, that is possible. Yes, I have I have played it uh, at least a couple times when it never fails. It, and you're right. It's a very interesting game. I've, yeah. I've, I've played it a couple of times. And yet, it still it has these weird things, incongruous mm-hmm. pieces. It's right. got these random cards that you get right. at three times in the game, and you can get more. And they're wildly unbalanced. Some of them are just are, – are basically – you can buy things that no one else can buy. The futures market in terms of resources is incredibly punitive and super important to be paying attention yeah, to. Yeah, it's coming you back can, to me you now. You can skip of that. Like, oh, this is such a great concept, and there's a lot of really great things here, but I this thing here pisses me off, and this thing here pisses me off. There's and a couple like, of Why is this things. here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know that's kind of my thing sometimes. It's like, why is this here? It, but it's, that's one of those games. For us, now listen, for some people, maybe that's perfect. But for us, we found it to be a tremendously elegant economic game in which the goal of the game is victory points, not money, which is fairly rare for the economic genre, um, and yet worked. It worked. The, com- the, the competition for industry, the competition for workers, the competition for the resources needed to power your industry, and then the competition to sell those things – at a profit in order to make your com- make your country uh, uh, survive was all really good. There were just a couple extra elements that were thrown in that that kind of left a left a little bit of stink. And that was the first thing Matt said. He's like, "Wait, why is this a part of this game? I don't I don't get right. it." Right. Um, so we may uh, we we may come up with a a fix for that. We may house rule those cards. We may. F- First, tried to just simplify those cards. Anyway, that was Candace's purchase. I bought one thing at that convention. I sold 20, 30 games. I know what this is. What did I, what did I buy? New copy of Avalon. New shrink racked copy of Avalon. Oh, my goodness. This has got to be like, what, our fifth? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. I, I buy a new Teach You deck every single year, if not twice a year. Um, I buy a new Avalon deck uh, box probably every other year. Uh, and it should be more often than that because those... Those uh, accept or you know accept or reject uh, tiles get real bad real fast. All right, let me do my highlights from the um, tell us from Strategic Con here. I had I think I had three distinct highlights. I had a little bit of a different con than, yeah, you did, than everybody yeah. else. You went and hung out with a friend of mine. I did. I did. I got to 
playtest uh, Matt Colville's RPG that they're working on. Some people probably know Matt's uh, MCDM on Twitch and YouTube. Great, great channel, great content. Does is doing great as a content creator for. It's not, like he's doing his own system now, but generally he's been like he's a D and D guy. Yeah. Um, one and of the, one of the had some really successful, guys, really. you know, Kickstarters and, and businesses, but got to play test his RPG and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like a very streamlined system where you feel like a hero from the get go and kind of like fast combat. I told him that you said that it was like the ultimate hack and slash game. And he was like, and he smiled broadly and said, that is what I wanted to do. That's exactly what I wanted to do. That's, I wish I had said that. That's great, but, I, but it, it, the combat was really kind of what you were saying. Yeah, the combat was 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 fast and fun, and and it was great to kind of uh, meet the team, meet the MCDM team there at Strategicon. So that was very cool. Another highlight was just wandering around the dealers' hall. Sure, um, you know, making some questionable purchases as I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but stopped at a little like a lot of times. There's that there's that dynamic is like you're walking by a table and just some some dude or somebody sitting there and you're like, do I stop? Cause they really want to talk to you about oh, I don't, I, a lot of times it's like, it's their terrible Kickstarter. That I can't make eye contact with those. Right. People. You can't make eye contact cause they're going to, they're going to show you a really bad game. No, you're going to see the hope in their eyes. And that's the thing that kills me. But, so, but I, I stopped at one because I saw that there was like, uh, he, Oh, here's a game from the same designer as scout. I was like, Oh, I'm a big fan of scout. Let's find out. What this was. So it turns out I'd actually like sat down at the table of Ninja Star Games and met uh, Dan Kobayashi, who is Ninja We have Star- all bought games from. Well, I didn't know this. That's what was kind of cool <laughs> about like, it. Dude, you got to meet somebody. I was like, oh, I met the coolest guy. He's like really into trick takers. And apparently like he brings games in from Japan and sells them in the English market. It's like, every, all, hey, everybody's so into trick takers. You, you need to you know meet this guy. And then it was like, wait, is it Ninja Star? I was like. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, it's Dan. Yeah, I bought games from him last week. So it was, <laughs> but it was. I think it was like nobody had actually met him met in him person. person. Correct, exactly. right? That was and awesome. So. That was awesome. A really, really nice guy. Just one of those guys that you're, we're like, and we were just pestering him. We were just like, <laughs> you, have, you have to, you have to bring this over, and you have to, do, you have to do this. And he's like, hey, guys, I got other things to do as well. I can't, I can't do all of that, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Sweet. But we, I did purchase uh, Reputation, the game that's from the designer of. Scout, and we can talk about that maybe a little bit. Let's talk about reputation. A, 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 on it's a much more interesting game I found to 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 hear described than it was to play a little bit. Uh, the idea is that we are building these. <laughs> we, we are bad people. We are bad people doing bad things. We are we are uh, last stage capitalists who are ostensibly trying to save the planet, but at the same time, uh, you know, put a little something in the pocket. And the idea is, is that each round of the game, there is going to be a public company and a private public concern. project and a private project and a yeah. private project that are going to be floated. that we are bidding on. Correct. It is and a bidding game. Exactly, and uh, which generally would be uh, it's right lo- up your alley. Tom. Love affair should be love affair of of the bidding games, um, and the idea being that the private sector is going to the the the, the public sector project. Is starts off with a whole bunch of money on it, and it also starts off with a certain amount of uh, do-goodery points. Essentially, let's call it okay. At the reputation, end, reputation. Yep. At the hence end, the name of the game. hence the name of the game. At the end of the game, whoever has the lowest reputation automatically loses, and then everybody else adds up how much money they made over the game, and whoever had the most money wins. Classic Reiner Knizia style. This is right. high, high Society, right? One of my favorite games of all time. High, right. high Society is just an absolute classic. Um, but because you're bidding on two separate things and you're bidding with these people, these population, these employees that you have, um, once they go out, it takes them several turns for them to come back into your supply. So timing is crucial. It's got a lot of really interesting parts to it. Yep. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Especially there's the difference between on the public projects, you are <clears throat> bidding to take on the project for the least amount of money, like common public project type of thing. Like, you, what's the cheapest bidder? Yep. On the private side, every time you take on the public side, every time you say, "Oh, I'll do this for less," "I'll do this for less," the money that goes out of the budget for those things goes on to the private project, and so they're almost like pure cash grabs. The private, but they also have often high degrees of negative reputation when you when you take them on. So yeah. 
We, uh, we played this game. Coal-fired balloons. <laughs> Essentially, we're we're still feeling our way around this game. I think it, we felt like it went on a little bit uh, too long. We were still kind of like exploring the space, and I think there was kind of like there was an appreciation there that had not, at least in our place so far, has not translated into fun. Yeah, did we do we play with four or five? Four, four, just four. It might be better with a slightly smaller player count. I'm not positive yet. Not sure. Like one of the cool things that happens in this game is that when you do win on a public project. Other players actually then get to co-sponsor it, and you kind of like have a Glom very on. quick, very quick uh, bidding to co-sponsor by one of the players on either side of you. So they're bidding against each other to then co-sponsor the project. And the main way there is like they can get some of the reputation that you you know took upon yourself for being the good person who took on this this public project. Yeah, so ten, I'm, I'm ten rounds. Dying to play it again. Uh, I want to I want to explore the space a little bit more. I ended up with the most money, but I lost because I had the least reputation, which probably so is works. What, probably yeah. what should happen. Yep. Um, and I threw the game towards Candace because I was bad at the game. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, but that got in second. Candace is also a shark. True. Yeah. I didn't. I'm not taking anything away from Candace. No. 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 I'm not saying you did. You did. I'm just saying she's. She. Is, but this she is. this kind of fits in the small box Avalon you know duration style of kind of we play this game it, it you know it fits in a 45 minute window ish yeah. kind of thing the question for me is why do i want to play this instead of high society because it does scratch a lot of the same itches and uh for me it is a little there's a little more to it obviously because you're not right. just bidding on one thing period you're bidding on two and you have your resources are not just a, a large amount of money and then you, you, you're you dwindling it down. No, it's a very limited, finite worker pool that have different refresh rates depending upon what you've done with them, which is uh, interesting. It's it's an interesting... Yeah, you're managing more than just, oh, I, I, I bid too much on that car. Exactly. And I, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so we'll talk about it more as we play. So, it yeah, more, I mean, I said he's much simpler, plays quicker. Uh, we often like the, the the cool thing about reputation, and maybe that's difficult. Was we were really struggling with like I don't know what an appropriate bid is well, here. Like we were in that space of like I, it, it was so situational that we were feeling our way around for the first time, and that that can be really interesting. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So let's see, Matt is. Uh, I think there is a mind clash game that is. Uh, first of all, they played um, Anachrony over the weekend. Oh my god, that that set was insane! It was. What well, the, the minis in that are? What they're like three inches tall? It looked and... like three feet tall from where I was standing, but they they were huge. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, listen, this is the thing about Mind Clash. Mind Clash is they were like hamster size, wonderfully, mm -hmm. gloriously overproduced, right? Um, and I love that. I, I, you know, Tricarian is a very handsomely, gorgeously produced game, and I love it. I love the ornate nature of it. I love the way that that's produced. Um, I'm not really a mini guy, but I got to say, Anachrony is really cool because you know you got to go in the, you got to suit up in these mech suits and go out and get the things you need. Do you need it in any functional way? No, you do not. But it is, it, it's kind of gorgeous. And they had a, they had a great time playing that. Um, it has table presence. Yes, Voidfall from many who has played it, uh, who has played it at least once now, if not more than once. He believes that this is the next great Mind Clash game. Now, Mind Clash isn't all hits, right? Perseverance had some middling reviews. Some people love Cerebria. Some people don't love Cerebria. Uh, but he says this is anachrony level. This is uh, a Tracarian level greatness. Can't wait until this starts getting in onto the actual table for for some plays. Yeah, can't wait to try heavy like the the weight on BGG on that is like four point seven or something crazy like yeah. that. I mean, it's really yeah. That's a that's a big number. Yeah, yeah. Got a chance to uh, introduce Age of Innovation to Lumen <laughs> Sperlin. Lumen came over and uh, and played a little game with us at the at the con. Hadn't. Uh, Hadn't had a chance to play with him yet, and uh, you know he he is a Terra Mystica fiend. Um, so 
introducing this to him was a real a real joy and just watching the way that that uh, that man's mind works he is a he is a force to be reckoned with yeah there's heavy overlap but in the i think competitive agricola community and the terra mystica yeah. community like, yeah people that get serious about those games tend to often will get serious about both of them and so i i've been at, i i watch lumen's channel quite a bit um at lunch while he's playing agricola and there's been a decent bit of uh, age of innovation chat while the, while the game is is going on. So I know he was eager to to try that. And I got to say, like, Age of Innovation is breaking the normal rules for a game brain, which is, like, we've done the review now. Yeah. So oftentimes after we do the review of a game, we don't end up playing it very much anymore because we're on to, like, playing the next game for the next review. Well, Age of Innovation is still making the table. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not sure that's entirely true. But, I'm not uh, entirely true, but that happens a lot. Sure. Um, it also has the benefit of timing. We are in the uh, the doldrums between Gen Con and uh, and Essen. You know, like pre Gen Con is the slowest time of the year, and then post Gen Con you get a couple games and you get to try them out, and then there's another doldrum until uh, until after Essen uh, is over. Um, right now we're in that kind of lull, so there's not a ton. For us to be to, to be reviewing and, and playing, and yeah, listen, we've said it. We've said that Gaia Project and Terra Mystica; these are games that you want to play over and over and over again. These are not bring it out every once in a while. These are games you want to play. And Age of Innovation, in that, in a lot of ways, as we said in the review, combines some of the best of both worlds. Uh, of those is is a game we want to play a lot. And we had a great time. We had a great time over the weekend playing it. Paul, I think, just played it last night. Right. Uh, had, an, had another good play introducing some, some people to, to that. It's a tough teach. Yep. I know that he had uh, two people that had never played Terra Mystica. And boy, that's a teach. Yeah, that was kind of like one of my comments from the review is like, if you have not played Terra Mystica, I, did, I do think it's a bit of a beast yeah. as a first teach. But listen, we're in the world where your first game has got to be a learning game. But I know it, like, it was slow with them yeah. last night. We, we finished... Um, Great Western Trail, quickly. New Zealand, yep. and they had, and you left, and because uh, I was supposed to give Paul a ride home last night, and he ended up getting a ride from Mike because I was like, okay, so well, how much longer do we have? And like, we are starting the fourth turn, you know. And Age of Innovation <laughs> is a six six turn ride, yeah. six, turn, six turn game. So, the game. so the teach had been clearly like we were more than halfway through our game before. Yeah, they started playing. Yeah, and you had to teach Great Western Trail, New Zealand. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I'm one of the great game teachers of the world, so that's just gonna be a pretty easy thing to get through. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, there is so there's a lot of buzz on Essen about, about what's going to be coming up for the spiel. Let us talk about uh, some of the things that are because because the spiel preview is up on BGG, and I always like going to that and sorting by thumbs. Because whatever has the highest thumbs, that's the, the those are the, the the hot games, right? And uh, the hot game right now appears to be Among Cultists, a social deduction thriller. Okay, uh, it has not only that, but there there are like two or three expansions for it that are already coming out that already have huge, huge uh, uh, love going out. Um, is this an Among Us spinoff? Uh, I believe it is, uh, or, or, or I believe it might be. Godot Games, uh, Stefan Godot. Um, it, okay, so you're either a cultist or you're an investigator, so very Call of Cthulhu, right? Very very Cthulhu mythos. Um, there is a nighttime uh, phase at the very beginning where people open their eyes if they're the cultists. Right. Recognize each other. Mm -hmm. um, there is a board with rooms that you go and explore and take actions and, and do things and try to stop the ritual from happening if you're one and kill the uh, kill the investigators if you're the other. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. I, 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 I look at it and I'm like, I'm not sure. Now that we're, you know, we're definitely, we started this, as Battlestar Galactica heads. Right. And then 
uh, Resistance and Avalon came along. And we Streamlined said, it. Oh, yeah. This is the crack cocaine version. This is the quick hit, boom, instant, get it, and you know, cut out all of that movement points and uh, and and action spaces, and just get to the heart of it. Get right to the lying. Get right to the get lying. right to the social. Get right to the uh, to, to the bitter accusations. Uh, you know, defenseless pleas of innocence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When we we, we can betray each other in fifteen minutes rather than three hours. Exactly. Though Maddie will say that it feels like three hours. Uh, I'm not sure that I that that there is anything that is going to draw me back to the Battlestar Galactica esque realm, which is what among cultists is kind of going to be like to some degree. What do you think? I don't know. I have to see it. I mean, if it is. Like to me, it, it sounds like it's a spinoff of Among Us, which was you know played in video game yeah. form, and like it had its moment. I think that moment's kind of over. I'm oh, sure. I, I played it. It's, it's it was a fun, very right. good, uh, the perfect game to come about during the pandemic. Right. You know what I mean? Good, yeah, perfect pandemic game, and it's also a fun game to watch. You know, seeing people lie when you actually know their identities or something like that. Like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, so I don't know. I mean, we're such Avalon heads that. I'm, I totally am interested in playing it. I have my doubts that it could possibly replace yeah. what, well, what we're doing, I, but you know, I, I, I definitely want to check it out. I don't think we're looking for a replacement. For I Avalon. wanted to love Blood on the Clock Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I Sounds like say, my kind of thing. I'm, I'm becoming more of a fan of, of Blood on the Clock Tower uh, as I'm playing it more. Jordan's invited me over, and I played it, played it with him. And Jordan's such a sweet guy that... When he is playing the uh, what, what is it the Lord storyteller Master, the storyteller or, yeah, yeah. No. when he's playing the storyteller you know there's no accents he's not wearing a cape of any kind it's just <laughs> it, it, it's just okay so now you're you know, okay what are you gonna do and it, it, there is a lightness to it that allows everybody to kind of be in two headspaces at the same time one is oh we're just here to have fun and have and have a good game right and then you guys are free to dip into the uh the, the storytelling the the larping as much or as little as you uh, as you want and i had, I had a great time uh, uh playing with them uh, the last time it is it is definitely a game that you can have a lot of fun with i i'm not sure how much of that is the design but it is it is definitely a a pretty it's still a pretty cool thing and it's good that it's out there it's good that the social deduction genre uh, is getting a lot of stands because of it right and listen a lot of people love it yes. and they play the hell out of it yeah. so there's got to be something there 100% yeah so i've got to be wrong at least for some people yeah yeah it has its it's found its audience yeah we're not yucking nobody's yell i'm trying not to well as best you can um the white castle can i talk about the white castle you talk about whatever you want. I'm going to talk about the White Castle. Okay. I don't have the Essen preview. In front. I'm not you and That's Candace right. and Matt. That, that is true. I'm the second level. That's right. Because you guys, whatever you, you, provide whatever you the, buy goes on my shelf. You and Jennifer and all these other things, you're the initial filter. True, true. Plus, whatever you buy ends up on my shelf anyway. Right. So why would you do it? It makes no sense. You buy Well, what? sometimes. I mean, this is how we end up with reputation. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a friend of the pod who brings those kinds of games, who brings the, the games where they're truly untested. Uh, this is, uh, Reputation is is from the, the maker of Scout, which is right. fantastic. And Ninja Star put it out, which is fantastic. I mean, it's 20 this, bucks. This has got bona fides. This one's got bona fides. Uh, White Castle is um, very interesting to me. Uh, ben is going to be, it's an auto buy. Um, so the people who. Is this a burger game? Hmm? Is it a burger game? A burger? No, it's not a White burger. Castle? What is it? It is not. It's the White Castle, which is it should be. It should it should be sliders, right? Right. Uh no, this is uh this is a Japanese uh a based game. Uh the authors are Sheila Santos and Israel Cedreno. Uh they are a duo that are known as Llama Dice. That's what they're that's what they're known as. And uh, their claim to fame was the Red Cathedral. Mm. Well, we like along that. With, along with Devere, yeah. And uh, yeah, so the White Castle is their new game. It looks really interesting. Oh, I see. Red Cathedral, White Castle. White Castle. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly. the way to think about it. Like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, next week, Black Tower. You're going to have like four dice, and the dice are going to be on this, this cute little Japanese bridge, and only the, device on the, uh, only the dice on the edges of the bridge, on either side of the bridge, are the ones you can use at any given time. So that looks like it's got an interesting mechanism. I'm down to check it out. Uh, Red, Red Cathedral, uh, I think, is a 
brilliant design in that it is a very, very simple design and yet well executed. And that that's not easy. It's not easy to do something so subtle. Yeah, that was a surprise because we kind of found found it like two years after it came out or whatever. And then it was like, this is really great. Yeah, Ben. 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 Yeah, Ben. Thanks, that's what ben. he does. That's what he does. It's a good ben. thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Um, evacuation, I already talked about a little bit. The new Vladimir Suhi where we're... Uh, packing up everything on Earth and moving to a new planet. Um, it looks interesting in the sense that um, you know what game from Essen this reminds me of, yes? No, I was just thinking, like, as I get older as a person, the word evacuation has a different meaning for me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there, there was a game that we, uh, that we bought so that was what, actually our... What point were you our, making... There was a Kramer and Kiesling game that we that was a hidden gem for us at uh, at uh, Spiel, and it was uh, about. Um, Do you actually need my help, or are you testing? Yeah, me? no. On the sh- on the ship, we're we're putting modules on the ship, and then we're putting them down on the planet. Yes. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you have it on the shelf over there. Yes, I do. <laughs> vamp. I'm going to vamp right now while Trey runs over and looks at it. Um, I uh, can't believe that we're blanking on this right now. Uh, but it, it it was a very good game. It was a game that kind of fell completely below the radar. And we were like, oh, you know what? This is actually good and interesting. Um, because you're taking these actions to load up the things you're are gonna that are gonna be necessary for you to start a new can't world and a new colony. What it can't find it, but I remember it. You re- can't you re- can't find it? Okay. Re- re-rolled. Reworld. 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 That's what it is. Reworld. That's what it is. Um, I think I like this game more than anyone. Yes. I like it quite a bit, though, uh, because the thing is, is that you're, you're, you're competing to get these various resources and things that you're going to need on your new planet. But it cuts does, the game right in half. It cuts the game right in half. But it's not just getting the right things. It's the order of those things, because the way they go on the <laughs> ship and the way they come off the ship... It's like the moving game. You got to pack the truck in it the really right is. order. Because if you put things in the deep into the back of the truck, you can't get to them until they're at the very end. So why, oh, why are the cleaning supplies in the very back of the truck? That's the first thing we need out. Why did they go then? There, there? That's exactly what it's like. Uh, this game looks a little bit like that in the sense that you are going to have an economy on Earth that you are going to need to keep running in order to get things off Earth and to start building things on the new planet. But you're going to have to cannibalize that economy or you're going to have to cannibalize your, your engine in order to, to affect the move. And how quickly can you start up that engine in the new place is what it seems to be. We'll see if it ends up being that way, but that's what it seems like Vladimir is going for. And, uh, and not, to, not, not to toot a horn too much, but... A new edition of Shipyard. Oh wow! My okay. favorite, my favorite Suhi is is coming out. It looks beautiful. It looks really, really nice. I kind of like the way the old one looks, but uh, I'm 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 ready and eager, especially if he adjusts those uh, end game contracts a little bit, and you know, you know, you could make a couple of tweaks to that game and make it even more amazing. But I I really dig that game. That's definitely like you love Shipyard more than anybody loves Shipyard. I think so, but it is one of those games. I'm glad where I played it. I think it's interesting, but you like you love it. I do. I love it. And it's a, it's a good game for sometimes people that you're um, that are a little newer to our. It's pretty much every time like, I bring it out. Hey, to here's a light to medium game that is a good gateway game. You, what I love about it is you look at the board, you look at everything out there, and you're like, oh, this is going to be way too confusing. This is impossible. This is like, there's so many things. Like, there are like six different rondels. Like, it looks impenetrable. And one turn into the game, you're like, oh, I get it. I 100% get it. I'm building ships. Here we go. Give me a. It's, it's one of the powers of the rondel is like, you have all these different actions, but when generally, like, when it's your turn, there's yeah. only one of three things you can do. So it like narrows the decision space into something that makes it manageable. Exactly. Where yeah. like, yes, you can play the game where I'm planning out everything deep in advance or at least trying to. Or you can just play it of like, hey, I have these three choices. What's the right thing to do right now? Yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, 
I would say the shipyard has a, a larger decision space than that because right. it is because you're literally choosing which rondel to activate right. and then choosing what to do on that rondel. So and the things a, that are available are constantly changing, and so in very interesting ways, it's it's good 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 mechanisms. And then you build a bunch of really ugly ships. Well, there's uh, a, that kind of fun. You know, I, they I don't... build gorgeous ships oh, that I'm I love sorry, very Tom. much. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Look. Uh, the ships, like proper ship design is to maximize the one thing you're going for. So if you're going to be a military builder, you're going to have tons of guns and tons of soldiers on a, on, on a ship and doing everything you can for that. There are other people that are going to be doing it. And nobody's building a balanced ship. That's not generally not something you want to do. I understand. Uh, but a great game. And last but not least, Nucleum. Nucleum is the other uh, David Turksey and Simone Luciani game this time. Um, and every word I've heard about this game is this is going to be a, a, a heavy masterpiece is what I'm hearing. Heavy masterpiece. So I'm dying to play that. Really, really, really looking forward to that. We'll see. It's going to be coming up. By- Candace is going, right? Yep. 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 Candace will be there. And, uh, I think it's time. I think maybe, maybe next year might be the time for, uh, for us to go back. I'd like to check it out. See what we can do. Should we talk about Great Western Trail, New Zealand? I think we better. Is there anything else on your list? I mean, if we don't, no. Okay, pretty let's do it. it. That's pretty much it. Uh, Great Western Trail. Is, so, for those who do not know, we'll, we'll say a little bit about Great Western Trail itself before we go and talk about New Zealand. Uh, Great Western Trail, when we did our poll of the Game Brainers, um, right. it was the number one game. It, it was, was the game that appeared on most lists. Uh, it was also the highest ranked game of all in the sense that nobody had it as their number one, but so many of us had it in their top three or top five. It was way up there for, for a lot of us and ended up uh, taking the crown when we, when we did the calculation. Any way you did the calculation. The way we did the calculation, it's it number one. It yeah. didn't win by a little bit. It won by a considerable, yeah. a considerable amount. It is a, a absolute favorite game. Uh, the idea being that you are cowboys in the, in, in the West and you are driving cattle. You're getting cattle and you're taking them over this uh, rough terrain that at, at the beginning of the game is, starts off quite empty from outpost to outpost until you get them to... To Kansas City, where you are then going to put them on trains, and you're going to ship them off to places where people are going to love eating that eating that meat. <laughs> right. Uh, and the better, the, the the more high quality cattle that you have to to sell, the farther that that cattle is going to go, and the higher price it is going to uh, it, it is going to gain. That's mostly it. And along the way, you're going to be building up. Both the uh, well. Speaking of rondels, sure, yeah, the is board is a, a rondel, rondel, essentially, right? It's a huge rondel, and the game's played where you're going to complete this circuit a number of times over the course of the game, and also as the game goes, the rondel in effect changes based upon player decisions. It both you have hazards that can kind of build up and get cleared out, but it's also people can build buildings, which actually like makes the loop longer. Yes, like when you're at the beginning of the game, there's only six action spaces so it's kind of like possible because you can move up to three or four, four spaces four yeah, spaces depending on them each time so right. you can kind of like tra- you can, oh, you're always have a difficult decision in these games about hey should i hit every spot like oh there's good things if i go here or kind of or should i skip that um and like how quickly can you c- complete the loop because when you complete the loop you're essentially just turning in your hand full of cattle and scoring it and yeah. uh, the scoring kind of main conceit is that there's different types of cattle but you can only score one of each type mm-hmm. so the set that you're building is kind of like set of uniques right you, it's it's bad when you have multiple of the same kind of cattle in your hand and you're trying to deliver high point deliveries like that's the core of the great western trail experience and now we've seen a bunch of games that play play off of that Correct. Yeah. Uh, the Railways to the North expansion, uh, I feel, makes it play like a very different game and is a wonderful expansion. Absolutely love it. Uh, we reviewed a couple months ago Argentina, uh, which was a, another expansion, like that very much as well. And now we're to New Zealand, which of these uh, variants of these different versions, this one is the most different, I think. I think we can pretty safely say that in the sense that, uh, first of all, we're not really dealing with cattle. I don't, right. There's not a cow. New Zealand, so it's sheep. Not a cow in the game. Uh, New Zealand famously has uh, more sheep than people <laughs> by a long shot. I think it's like five to one. Five, uh, okay. Five sheep for every person. I did not in know New that. Zealand. That is a fact. Uh, I'm not sure it's five to one, but it is a lot. 
Um, and uh, what we're doing is we are going to be taking those sheep to market in Windy Wellington, and then uh, they're going to uh, they're going to get on ships or they're, they're going to be dealt with either locally or to, to distances. Um, unlike all of the other games where they specify exactly where they're going in, in you know, in, in Great Western Trail, uh, you can deliver just San Francisco is the farthest destination, I think. In uh, Argentina, I think you're dealing, you're going to Antwerp and, uh, you know, you're going to Europe, the various capitals of Europe. Yeah, you're putting things on boats and going to foreign ports. In this one, uh, it's much more abstract. There are small little islands here and there that are going to open up extra spaces, but not so many extra spaces. Um, it's not really the, the... Right, there's kind of an archipelago Pacific Island exploration thing. Yes, that has uh, a, a lot of th- things that you can deliver. So, so in, the, in the core game, one of the kind of main decisions you're doing is, is you're, uh, as you're playing, you're adding workers. And the workers are the way that you specialize. Correct. And there were three in the core game. You've, uh, you've, there was four in Argentina, and yeah. now there is... Well, why don't I say what those, what those well, three are? Because please. it kind of helps you understand like what's going to be different about New Zealand from, from the core game. In the core game, you've got cowboys, you've got engineers, and you've got builders, Yes, essentially. Correct. Because you can build buildings. There's a building strategy. It's also, you need to kind of like build out your rail in Great Western Trail in order to access additional markets, but there's also like... And to save money. Save money, but there's also like powers and rewards you can get, and so kind of like expanding out your rail, like it's both part of the game and it's a strategy unto itself, and then the cowboys are useful for um, buying more cattle and, and kind of building a herd uh, of more valuable, you start with it's a deck hand builder. management. Yeah, this is a deck builder. If we didn't say that, like one of the things is you, you start with, um, you know, a handful of cattle. Everybody starts with the same deck, which is a, a combination of four different kind of low value kinds of cattle. Some are really low value, and then you add better cattle as you progress in the game. And like buying the cowboys allows you to buy the better cattle cheaper get access to better cattle and buy them cheaper. cheaper. Right. And then the cattle themselves are worth points, but they also make for better deliveries. And so yeah. maybe what's in, and, and one of the things that happened, it's been a really telling thing that I've applied to a lot of games is like, we played great Western trail. We liked it. Yes. But it was also one of those games where it's like, when we played it the first few times, it felt like, Oh, there is one correct way to play this cowboy and, strategy, cowboy strategy. Right. Yeah, and it's like, boy, this seems really imbalanced. Cowboy seems really, really good. Yeah, and then playing it more, we found, oh, look, how did how did that guy just destroy me? Oh, he did a builder strategy and crushed us with a builder strategy. And then eventually, we found out, oh, you know what? Engineer is viable. I don't think you could do just engineer, but but engineer with a little uh, with a sousant of so some, uh, yeah. This, some uh, of it was playing more. Some of it was actually like reading the BGG forums and finding like oh i didn't realize this oh there's the you know it's what what looked like a complete imbalance at the beginning was not what it was is that the cowboy strategy was simply like the most accessible Correct. when you are newer it's the thing that's because e- it's 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 a little one-dimensional in terms of how how you how you go about it but it's been a great rule of like when we play a game initially and something seems imbalanced we really should not give that a whole lot of weight Except that I'm going to question. <laughs> you're going to break that. Right no, no, now. I'm, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask a question. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to deliver a verdict. But I'm going to ask a question about this game eventually when we get to it because right. there is a fourth uh, a type of employee that you have in this game. You still have the. Uh, you, you still have the cowboys. In this case, you have the shepherds. shepherds yeah. Uh, you still have the builders. You still have the engineers. Only instead of engineers, you now have uh, ship captains, yeah, essentially. Captains. Yeah. Uh, but there's a fourth type. Now, there is a shearer because uh, guess what? Sheep uh, are a dual resource uh, element in the game, right? You can you can sell them for meat, but you can also shear their wonderful, wonderful wool. And we have merino uh, a sheep as one of the varieties. We, we have some very valuable uh, sheep for that kind of thing. So... Uh, there are two different things you can do with those pesky pesky sheep that you're <laughs> taking across the uh, uh, across the South pesky Island. Pesky sheep, okay. Yeah, you're you're taking them across the South Island uh, to to market. There are actually two markets for there, which is a very interesting development in the game because generally in Great Western Trail and all of the other variants we've had thus far, what you're trying to do 
is you're trying to take some actions as you race to get to the end destination to sell your cattle. And what you're trying to do over the course of that is take every opportunity to maximize your hand strength. It's like, okay, right. I have two of these, I have two of these cows. Uh, oh, at this place, I can sell one of those cows and draw another card, and maybe that'll be right. Or I have an exchange token now, which I can exchange to draw two more cards and then discard two to make a better hand, and so on and so forth. There's, there's a lot of hand management. There's a lot of hand management in in these games. Now, all of a sudden, there is two different ways to play each sheep. Each sheep has two different values. They have the sale value for their meat value, essentially, you could say. And they have their shearing value, which is represented by a ball of uh, a ball of wool. And those values are brilliantly portrayed in that some of the higher value sheep can be low value for one, but high value for another. And they can re really mix it up. And there's a, uh, a very low scoring victory point sheep that happens to be both good as a shearer and both good as a, as a seller, right? There, there yeah. are, there are various different types, but depending on where those shearing, the, the shearing action is, there's essentially two shearing actions in the game uh, the, uh, at the first half of the game anyway. Uh, but one of them is the main shearing action, which is however many shearers you employ, you are going to be able to take one card for each of them out of your hand as long as they're different and shear them for for points. And those points for money yeah. uh, for money and those and that money is also potentially if the, the, you're sharing for enough going to allow you to put a disc up on the big board. We didn't really talk about that, but when you sell these she when you sell these cows, when you sell these sheep, when you shear these sheep. Uh, if the value is high enough, you can put a disc out onto the board, and that disc this is, is essentially the destination of where you were selling them. That exactly. was the narrative. Of exactly. It. Yep. You are essentially going to be unlocking abilities on your main board. Right. Uh, in particular, for the most part, auxiliary actions is a lot of what you're doing, which is a, a whole menu of different things that you. So can you're specializing do. also. Exactly. Like what you pull off your board, you're which, yeah, which, which is cool. But now. Essentially, instead of just racing all the way to the end to get the best hand, now there's an intermediate step that I've played having come like the third building in all the way to the last building before Wellington, before the final delivery, which we played in the last game. Mm -hmm. And where that comes in and what you do at that phase is really, really interesting because essentially what we did last night when the very last space you can get to is the shearing action. I have this great ha I have a great hand for shearing, I have a good hand for selling, but if I'm going to shear, I'm essentially getting rid of those cards and I'm drawing blind. Right. For what I'm going to be selling. So to some degree, robbing Peter to pay Paul, you are cannibalizing your your own hand and putting it up to luck, fate, chance, and you're relying on other aspects to hopefully be able to uh, call your hand in such a way. It also meant you were you were placing out a lot more discs than I was because yes. I was one dimensional and you were kind of doing shearing and and selling and so you could put out a lot more discs so that was interesting too. It seemed like it might have capped out. It did. But I mean, listen, that's one of the cool things about uh, these games is there there's a recommended basic setup yeah. that we didn't do because this was the third time for me playing. I don't know what number it was for you, but five or six. The way the order in which the neutral buildings go out at the beginning of the game can be randomized, and that makes for a different playing board, and that can really have a huge effect upon what kind of game it's going to be. Really big. And so, again, I think we've talked about this before, where I suspect that proper play of Great Western Trail is after you do the initial setup and you look at the locations, and maybe you look at what the reward tiles are that come out, and maybe you look at what workers came out in the initial allotment. But this, I often call this like the elbows on the table moment where you really should just sit there, place your elbows on the table, and stare at the board for three or four minutes and say, okay, because the neutral buildings are in this order, what is that going to mean for this game? And in the last game we played here, that was like the placement of the shearing action had a huge effect upon this particular play. That's interesting, but you also, like proper play says, oh, you need to recognize that at the beginning because it's going to have a big effect on the game. On, on what, what employees you hire, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, other changes, other different things in this game. Uh, there's a lot more cards in this game now. The uh, 
in right. the other uh, varieties of Great Western Trail, for the most part, one of the big auxiliary actions is to eliminate cards from your deck for good. Mm-hmm. That is gone. There's still a little bit of it. There, but there, but it's, not, it's no longer an action that you can just take willy-nilly. You actually have to trade in two very valuable resources in order to do that. Uh, essentially, the deck culling in this game has been severely de-emphasized. Right. And in its place, it might have been more of an autoplay in the first one. You think? Or, yeah. uh, um, no, not necessarily, no? but okay. but but definitely a strong strategy and one you should absolutely consider in a deck builder. Right? Uh, how how would not getting rid of the bad cards in your deck not be a part of a deck builder? Right. Well, in this one, it's kind of been replaced by a panoply of different cards that you are going to have access to and to get into your hand. There are four um, basically zero point invisible cards and what i mean by invisible is when they come into your hand you're going to be able to at the beginning of your turn immediately play them get the benefit of them and immediately draw another card so they do not clog up your hand they do not clog up your deck they become part of your economic yeah. engine they, right? they give you money they give you yeah. ship movement and, and and various things like that again you're specializing yeah by what you what you choose but hopefully they're not exactly gumming up your hand the way correct and then there are 10 different uh, other special cards that are going to be purchasable. Purchasable, where you randomly choose them and they are put into. Uh, but we'll play with a, four, a order, four, four out of four the, the possible ten. 10. Right. And gold is a new resource in the game that you're going to be able to acquire. And as you acquire gold, you can spend gold to get those cards. And again, this is another way to specialize. This is another way to specialize. Uh, except that in all the plays I've played so far, uh, I've never, nobody has ever been able to really wail on that uh, a lot. It has been a relatively, it has been a, it's been a difference for sure. But well, they, they cost these gold nuggets, and the gold nuggets are hard enough to come by that you're you're not making a lot of purchases. I think Dimitri made a lot of purchases in his game that didn't seem to work out for him. No, didn't didn't quite work out for him. So it's an interesting element, but one that we have so far. In, in play, and, and still early days. Right. But so far, nobody has figured out the magical system to maximize that and to really turn those into a strong advantage as opposed to a momentary benefit. Right now, right, a lot of times it just feels like, oh, and I get one of these cards, rather yeah. than, oh, this is something that I worked hard to get because getting a few of these is really going to determine the direction I go Yeah. so far. Yeah, now listen, some of them are, are special sheep, Right there's the the Romney sheep is in in, in every game, and then yeah. there's a couple different types of sheep that might be one of the four out of ten cards that get put into the game. And hey, having different sheep is always great because that's going to make your deliveries bigger and better. Right, that's that's yeah. always a good a, a good thing to have. So there there's some very interesting things there, but that's kind of what has happened to deck building in this game. Deck building has now become something where there's a lot more cards on offer and a lot more opportunities to get. Kind of minor specials, essentially, is mm-hmm. what I would is is how I would would frame them that are going to change the way that your deck is is operating. But thus far, we haven't really been able to uh, engine turn them into an engine per, per se. That's right, which is interesting. I think we're at the point where our, our plays have been fun. Yes, and I think we are seeing a lot of potential. And, and maybe in some ways it should be reassuring to people is like if you've played Great Western Trail, you can step into this and play it like pretty Great quickly. Western Trail. Yeah. And you will not be lost. No. And like you you have a the choice to kind of engage with the new, you know, bells and whistles that you can you can turn. You can play this pretty you know, straight as I have, you know, f- with kind of standard Great Western Trail strategies, and you will not be lost. Uh, but we're still we're still exploring exploring space. I There's would say. a Pathfinder track now that, that that exists as well. There are these little birds on cards, and if you get those, you're moving up the Pathfinder track. It is a victory point track, and it also some minor powers. unlocks little powers. Yeah. Um, as you are moving your ship through the archipelago, you are going to be putting down houses, a la Rails to the, the Rails to the North expansion. Right. Only in this case. Um, even more so, the the houses are going to have a wide variety of abilities depending on what type of building you you stop at. Some of them are like rails to the north, unlocking new delivery spaces, and that's that's still a large. Yeah, this does function. have a lot in common with with the rails in the north expansion in particular. In that, if I remember correctly, like Great Western Trail, there's kind of like there's the railroad, yes, and you're kind of how far do I build down along this single line? Correct. 
Whereas once you got to Railways of the North, we actually have like, oh, you can choose very different paths. And these paths that you choose can also indicate I'm specializing to a certain degree. And that's what's here in New Zealand. Correct. You, we kind of look, there's a, a map where we're moving our ships around. And like having studied the map a little bit now, it's a little clear of, okay, if you're still planning on doing more standard sheep deliveries than going to the south, makes a lot more sense if you're going to be doing, you know, a lot of shearing. It, there's some good delivery spots when you go to the north on the on this map, a little yeah. bit. So you, but you're so you are like where you go with your ship is should be in a line with what you're doing with the rest of your engine. Now I tried to do a ship heavy mm-hmm. play because I like to be a good podcaster and I like to say, hey, in the original Great Western Trail, everyone thought it was all cowboys, and right. then suddenly you, you you unlock that. So I tried to unlock the other the, the other options. You left the lack of imaginative play to me. Uh, pretty much. Yep. I, I think in one of our games, you went decently builder. Mm-hmm. You went, and I lost. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I lost badly going heavy ship, and here's why. There's a new rule on the moving of the ships. Which is when your ship reaches a destination and you are going to put down a house, that ends that that action. So basically, if, if you're going to put down anything so in any I of these had, destinations, so if yeah. I build up, you, you can have up to five captains. You can have right. up to five uh, sailors, essentially, right? If I have five sailors, how frequently am I using those five sailors? It's overkill. It, it is. It is overkill because it's almost always going to be at least use, that's the way it seems. Use right now. two yeah. sailors to move, and then one sailor to activate that space and do the and do the action of that space um, to be all five. Is very rare, actually, and the number of spaces there. There's one space on the board that, in the uh, interesting little fact, uh, there's a cute little twist in the game, which I like quite a bit. Which is three of the six basic buildings that start off the game, the neutral buildings that right. start off the game. Halfway through the game, they flip over to the B side and they do something slightly different, or very different, actually. One of them does very different. In one case, it turns an action from a. Movie I whined or- about it in our last game a little bit. Right. You you did yep. you did yeah didn't see that coming I wasn't going to go there but yeah and then and then I went and built something right after that that made you want even more it was a, it was a bad situation for you and yet you still crushed us yeah 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 the so one of these spaces for instance allows you to move your ship once and then as a separate action move your ship as many spaces as you have uh, sailors right, right. Um, when you flip it. It's suddenly two separate actions that move your ship as many spaces as you have sailors, mm-hmm. uh, essentially. So uh, it, it's a, it, it beefs it up. I wailed on that space in the game that I played uh, that had all the sailors. Still did not come <laughs> close to did, In our first game, totals. didn't David play a ship strategy and like go all around the board? And he, went, do, he went a lot more. And do yeah. pretty well. Yeah, he did, did okay, do, yeah. but not great. So the, we're we're in that space right now where it it seems like the shipping strategy is not rewarding in points as much as as much as we that's want. a perception I saw I was hitting the forums last night after we played I'm seeing a lot of people kind of question they feel like this game plays faster or like it's yeah. ending quicker than some of the other uh, Great Western trails and so it there's like not some people feel like there's not enough time for building strategies to actually develop that they're getting they're kind of getting you know rushed by the uh by the shepherds in, uh, in the, the map is shorter mm. the map is shorter there there are fewer hazard spaces i think in great western trail there's four different types of hazards in mm-hmm. this there's only two there's only two types of hazards it, it appears that the map is shorter hey you might write in and say hey the map is actually not shorter at all it appears it feels shorter is what it, is what it does for sure um being able to put out discs twice for sheep in the course of one run um, does make it feel a little shorter. I like that. It felt one of the things I like about this game is I think when I played the other Great Western Trails, particularly the base game, it can take a certain while for your engine to develop. Mm-hmm. Like you're kind of spinning your wheels a little bit before you get some purchase, and like, oh, I finally okay, I could finally place that one delivery on a on a what are they black or, or brown? The, the, the dark like, cornered spaces. Like yes. when you can expand your hand from four cards to five cards, your game really opens up. Yes. At that point. I think 
previously playing Great Western Trail, that might I, I felt like that didn't really happen until the second half of the game. Whereas with New Zealand, I feel like that's almost like a uh, my second time through the map. I'm doing that. Like my second yeah. delivery, I'm almost definitely need to be expanding my hand size, and and it did. Like I'm starting to specialize quicker. So things yeah. do feel like oh the the wheels are turning quicker and I'm engaging with my engine quicker. Only f- in this game. only three spaces away from the start in this game, there is an island that gives you a uh, dark cornered uh, placement space that only costs seven. Right. So uh, so it is ultimately so doing some shipping deeply can achi- really pay off really early. Yeah, deeply yep. achievable. Um, yeah, and, even with your the, base card, seven's completely achievable. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, it's interesting. I will say, I think we're coming down to to a few things now. So one, I, I want to say that the Pathfinder track does nothing for me. The the it it seems like a track that I'm putting things on that doesn't feel particularly it's not th- interesting thematic to me. It's not very interesting, yeah. uh, and I'm not sure why it's in 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 the game. I don't get it. I don't get it. It just it feels like there is a it's another option. There's something I can climb and it doesn't feel particularly thematic. It doesn't feel particularly connected to anything. It doesn't feel great also to wail on it. Like you yeah. you get to a certain point, it's like, oh well, I can still turn this stuff into money. Yeah. But it uh, but it's never interesting. Melanie played it for the first time and she maxed that track out and that kept her very close, actually. She was mm-hmm. she did she did fairly well on that. Um I will say that the addition of all these other cards looks really cool. So far, I've not played a game in which I've been able to turn that into a decisive advantage where I've been playing the bonus card game. Mm-hmm. I haven't really found a bonus card game uh, particularly yet. Now, early days, right? So, so I'll say that. But I do like the fact that those things are uh, available to me. And if I can figure out a way to incorporate them in more, I'm way into it. I'm way into the idea of it. Yeah. Um, I tell you, I, on that point, let me... Yeah, please. Th- th- one of the, because of the nature of the way you deliver cards in this game, mm. um, and I was playing cowboy strategy, shepherd shepherd sure. strategy in this last game, there comes a point a lot of times where you've pulled your hand, you've manipulated your hand, you're 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 setting yourself up for your delivery, and there's times where you look at your hand and you're like, I am ready to deliver. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mess with this. Yes, and so like even though a lot of these cards like give you a little bonus and then they replace themselves. Like I can't mess with that stuff right. because I've got my perfect, 20, perfect 21 delivery. point delivery yeah. here, which is major points, major money. Like I can't engage with that part of the game because I've got my perfect set. I just need to get to Wellington at, at that point. So at least when playing a cowboy strategy or something like that stuff can only kind of mess me up. The the little tr- you know trickle of rewards has a cost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I I think that Interestingly enough, so uh, let me get right to it. I enjoy playing this game tremendously. Mm-hmm. I have more fun playing this game than any other variation of Great Western Trail. I really do enjoy it. I think the shearing action is really fun. It's a really interesting calculation. Feels opened up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I, I like sheep, my little boreguitas. I, I, <laughs> I like better than the cava. Um, I, I like having the, 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 the new cards, the different cards. It, it feels fun. It feels a little more freewheeling. Money is less tight. Still feels tight sometimes. Well, but not... not uh, let's, Argentina feels punitively tight. Right. Argentina is... It feels... In every game I've played of Argentina, yeah. I am just dying for like like you make a wrong step and you're just what, i can't do anything i can no. trade in two cattle for one coin yes please i'll do it you yeah. know anything anything but now that your sheep can you know in in you can monetize them twice in one go around i believe there is more money out there well what happened with melanie in our game last night i've never seen in any other great western trail game which was that she had too much money like yeah. that just doesn't happen in these games and her if she, you know it was her first play um and she's really excellent player in general but like her i've never seen it where the the failure of her game was to con- failure to convert her money into points well she had and interestingly enough the reason why or one of the main reasons why is that she had uh, she wanted to do a shepherd slash uh culling a uh, uh, shearing game right. and there were no shepherds or shearers yeah in, she was late in, to the worker party in the worker yep. party yeah and she you know she could have paid and bought you know she could have bought 
two sailors or two uh, two builders at a time, three four rounds in a row. Um, she didn't want to do that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, and frankly, I'm not sure it would have been, been right to do it. It nope. might have been too late for for those strategies to suddenly come online at that point. Well, that's the one thing I wanted to just kind of ruminating here is like the share strategy seems cool, but it's you can't go without the shepherds. You still need the shepherds to get the better cattle to do your better shears too. Like it still feels yeah. like though there's a little bit of a at least in our I initial games that like you still need your shepherds. You still I'm, need the bottle there's a bottleneck there on shepherds. Uh, that's kind of where I'm going here, which is that I enjoy this game. Uh, I'm I'm having more fun playing this than than any ver- variety of Great Western Trail. I think my second favorite is Rails of the North. I think I love Rails of the North. Uh, I think it, it does a lot of great stuff. That A, a lot of the stuff that this game here, also does. right. That's the, the part you like, yeah. Uh, but I love the sheep. I love the shearing of the sheep and the calculation of shearing versus hold off on that for the, for the delivery. Um, I, I love all of that. But I do wonder if what, the, what I love about this isn't also turning it into a less dimensional game. That... The fact that you that the sheep are monetized twice does that make shepherds indispensable? And much like we found in Great Western Trail, where we thought cowboys were indispensable, and we ended up finding no, 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 you can build a game where you are you are ninety percent builder, where you're ninety percent engineer, and you can win in those varieties. There's there are ways to make that strategy pay off. I'm wondering if the addition of a second way to monetize sheep has not damaged the other two options. Uh, we, we will see. It's Hard to way say. too early. We, let's talk about the bonus it. bonus tiles right now because yes. the thing is, is like there there are a way. Like there was a the shepherds disappeared really quickly in our game, but among the bonus tiles now, the B tiles that come out, there are a number of generic workers that end up being slightly more expensive probably in general because you have to spend gold and you have to kind of spend the money yeah. type of thing. But, but they're wild cards. They can but they're anywhere. wild cards. And those are, pro- you know, probably some of the more desirable. Car- so there's ways kind of like around this that may not be obvious in initial plays. Yeah. Where like it, maybe it's the type of thing where like I, you don't need to go heavy shepherd, shepherd to do your shearing, but you do need like a second one. Like I found just a, just a second builder. Because yeah. I was doing building and shepherding, shepherding, whatever, and like just having that second builder meant that my I was able to put out significant buildings as opposed to just having the single. Like yeah. that first one makes a big difference, um, and which that, I think is interesting because really um, having two or three shearers, having a second shepherd, having a second builder, right? All of those it's not pure specialization are tremendously yeah. valuable, and it kind of keeps you from the other. You know, the game gives you four points if you collect a full set of right. five of of these things. <laughs> there are advantages to doing that. They That's right. this is already really good, that. and here's four points. Exactly. Um, so the fact that that this game in particular seems to really want you to have two of everything. Uh, is is interesting and a good design a good design element. Um, so yeah, it, it's a game I'm really conflicted about because mm-hmm. I like so many of the things in the game and I'm enjoying my plays so heavily. And yet, I have deep questions as to is this going to pan out? Like like is there going to be uh, tremendous replayability or? Is is what we're noticing to be the dominant strategy is going to remain the dominant strategies because the design Wait, we kind of is know from experience allowing. it won't. I would maybe, say maybe okay as the know. as the crusty guy in yeah. in the group here though I'm finding that my emotional response to this is I really want to explore this more yes so that's that's the good news yeah and I and I it's a good sign that you know when I got home from game night last night I went on BGG and I was like looking for strategy advice. Like, I'm in this spot now where, like, okay, it seems like this is really dominant. What am I not understanding? Let's hit the forums. Let's hit, you know, players that know more. And, like, I think that's starting to emerge right now. But it was also, like, I looked at the forums, and I think it was, like, strategy articles zero. So, like, we're early days, right? We're in the super early days where, um, in general, these games turn out to be pretty well balanced. Yeah, 
I, so, I, I, I'm, I'm not, and it's okay if they're not perfectly balanced. Yeah. Part of learning, you know, where the edges are and what, mm-hmm. where you can get a little more purchases. Yeah. Part of learning games. Do not listen to what I'm saying and think that I am in, in any way besmirching this game. Uh, let me re- repeat what I've said several times. I'm having more fun with this game than any version of of Great Western Trail so far. I this is a fun game. I'm less frustrated in this one. Yes, this yeah. is a, this is a really good, really fun game. I do. I wonder if the elements that seem a little odd ducky at the moment like the 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 wide variety of cards that you can pick up and add into your deck i'm wondering if they're going to gel with what i'm trying to do as opposed to be just a a a minor little bonus that happens here here and there Mm -hmm. i would love it if they they were a bigger part of the uh, of the game and maybe that's just just more plays um, I, I would love it if a if a sailor strategy, if a if a builder strategy, uh, could come in and and kick our butts and show us that oh no this is this is the way you do. Well, one one note that I did hear though is in a sense, you you almost somebody needs to do building just to make the slow map the longer. Down. Yeah, right. Just like if you down. don't if you don't build some buildings, then you will be run over by the shepherds who are just speed running the the map and making big deliveries, you know, buying cattle, doing speed runs. You know, like that's, you do have, you do have to, to break that up. It's Once, almost, you need two builders in the game. Again, this is an early thing, sure. but, I've, but I've heard this comment from a lot of people now after one play of New Zealand, they, I, sadly for Argentina, like almost immediately everybody says like, okay, I don't need to play Argentina ever again. Huh. I, I really like Argentina. I have to say, I really do like Argentina. I feel like it's going to get skipped. It might get skipped. Um, and part of the reason, though, is something I like about it, which is it's mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> Most people don't want mean. Uh, no. Yeah. L- listen, say what you want about the Kiwis. They're not a mean people, right? Uh, Jacinda Ardern, their their prime minister, super sweet. They're they're just like fly the Concords, Murray. I mean, they're they're just like they're they're I mean, wonderful. Right, Peter Jackson. They're wonderful. The Maori people. may disagree. Okay, well that's fair enough. Uh, you got you got me there. That's true, true, true. But they 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 they're they're widely seen as being a very kind people. They they live in the Middle Earth. It's it's a pretty nice place. Um, <laughs> it, the game feels like that. It when feel, I visited, it like, they were all very nice to me. It, 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 it feels like what what you've got, you've got some sheep. All right, well here, here you go. Here's some here's some money. Yeah, there you go, Brit. Right, Brit. Um, it, it feels it feels that way. We were trying to do. We're doing the worst <laughs> Kiwi accents. Is the other thing we have to say that that every time we play this game, we will start talking like like Murray from Flight of the Concords. Yeah, all we have is Flight of the Concords. That's pretty, pretty much all, all we can do, and it's awful. And then we'll start to go in to Australian, and then we'll complain about other people's Australian accents as we ourselves cannot do a good Kiwi. Um, so Sorsha Ronan broke down the difference between a kiwi accent and the australian one did she yeah there's a good there's a good video of, got of, good of her doing it and part of it was that she said the australians are more nasally get nasally and right. and uh and, and new zealanders are more kind of like low-key mumblers or something and i noticed that they seem to be clipped short short Brit. Sort of Brit. <laughs> uh, we really anyway, should not have talked about that was not good. accents at all. That was not a good thing. And yet it is something that has happened in every single game we've played of this. Um, it is a very interesting game. I, it's it's everything you want a uh, a new version of a, of a classic to be. It's they take some swings. They do some different things. They have changed the game up in a much more significant way than Argentina has. And probably that's one of the reasons that people are saying I may not need to play Argentina again. Um, it is we a, also played this, and it w- it went pretty fast. Part of it is your amazing teach. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, uh, it's true, Tom. But like it did it did play fast. Yeah. Like it's a lot of game, and I mean, there's a few times where it came around to me, and like something had happened, and I needed to reconsider what I was doing. But generally, we were not waiting on people. No, 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 too much. Like it 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 tends to flow. You got your own stuff to do. The other stuff people are doing is are affecting you. Yeah. But it's like it's not one of those things where we were complaining about with like Teletum last year, where like you may think you know what you're going to do on your next turn, when it but it's going to change you, radically totally before it comes board. around. Hundred percent. That is that is not this game. You're very often, and I find this fun of like looking at the map and being like, "Am I two steps away from Wellington, or am I three steps away from Wellington?" You know, like yeah. I'm doing those kind of things. Like, where am I going to go here? And then when somebody built, as you did at one point of the game, it's like that. Okay, I was two steps away. Now I'm three. 
you know, right, and yeah. and that feels bad. like because how like there's often often something delicious about like each one of these steps along the way offers you good things. Yes. You're getting good rewards. It's just like, it, is it the more efficient, like sometimes that hardest decision of like, I need to skip this thing, which would have been really good for me just because like, I just need to get to Wellington quicker or whatever. Like you're balancing so many stuff and, and you're doing a lot of planning. So even on other people's terms, I'm quite engaged mentally with, what with what's going with, on. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So this is a big recommend for me, especially because I'm looking at it and saying, I want to explore the space more. Like, that's the really good sign. Like, we may have our doubts about some of sure. it. But that was certainly, like, when I first fell in love with Agricola. It's like, after the first game, I was like, I can't wait to play again. Clearly, there's so much to explore. There's so many different things to do. And those pieces are here. We just haven't figured out how to use them yet, as long as they are actually usable. You're expressing some doubts. Yeah. Totally cool. I, I I also am a strong recommend. I I love this game. I'm really really enjoying it. I, I just want to voice that asterisk. There's an asterisk on this that is is like I am loving this game. I really want to keep playing this game. I want to play a heck of a lot of it. It's it's the it's the most fun that I'm that I've had in the Great Western Trail systems uh, thus far, and I'm looking forward, forward to playing a lot more. Uh, uh, but there, there, are, there are just a couple little niggling doubts that I have in the back of my mind, which are like, hmm, I, w- I wonder well, is if this I've going beaten to you going? at this game twice in a row now, there must be something wrong with it. Clearly, there's a problem. There's a problem here. Mm-hmm. It's awful. It's awful. It's so good. I can't, I can't not shear. You, you, you didn't shear. You just sold your, your, your sheep. And it felt like a hollow victory. It looked like you were just, you were selling these, these huge overgrown My sheep wind was basic. Were, it was it was, I was super basic. so basic. Yeah. It, it was yeah. You, you you had the Katy Perry of victories. Mm. It was uh, yeah. Feels good. Well. <laughs> well, there you go. That's our that's our review of Great Western Trail New Zealand. We uh you know, uh, we're saying it's a it's a buy. It's a buy. It is a it is a very very good game. It is really interesting. It's really fun. Um, you know, and other than the the difficulty with maintaining a Kiwi accent, I got nothing. Uh, got nothing but love for it. Um, what what are we going to be reviewing in the next coming weeks? I, I don't think we have really much. Well, on one that. thing we didn't talk about um, real quick is we did get in a play of the new Ark Nova expansion. Oh yeah, let's end with that for sure. Yeah. So that's got to be coming up in the future. Candace has the copy. Yep. That we can play, and we had a really good play of that. You, Tom crushed, so just don't go thinking that Tom doesn't know how to play board games and kick our teeth in, because he does. He kicked our teeth in big time with Ark Nova. Look, uh, play, what, what is the name of the new expansion with Ark Nova? Um, what is the name of the new expansion? I it's some watery that. thing. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's adding that in. Let me see. But we had a great first play of... of Marine that. World. Marine World. And so that's got to be coming up soon. Ark Nova Marine Worlds, yeah, um, and yeah, we we can just give a quick preview of it, which is, um, it is an evolution, not a revolution. It is adding more cards. It is adding a new, you know, sort of uh, aquatic realm. Some the, new enclosures. Yeah, a little a little bit of new enclosures for the, uh, for the sea animals and and so on and so forth. Um, but as with any game that's already got a huge deck. You add a bunch of new cards to mm-hmm. a new deck, and it doesn't feel overwhelming. Like I didn't really, I, 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 I crushed without ever building any of those enclosures or, or really having. Any it did of those feel animals. like it addressed some of the rough edges of the initial game. Yeah, a little bit where it op- opened things up a little bit, which is kind of the way we felt about like we were big fans of Barrage. Yes, from the initial spot, but then the expansion opened things up and kind of like made it. Uh, Gave you a little like that's often a, a discussion we have of like is less tight better like often tight's good yeah um, I was less frustrated once we started playing the barrage expansion where I just felt less stymied sometimes it offered more strategic options mm-hmm. and that's what you want it's, it's like that and I I that, think that was my initial impression of the Ark Nova expansion was especially because so often your so much of your game can be about that that turn to round two. Yeah. Uh, getting your two reputation, you know, that, you know, flipping your first card or getting your second associate out. Like, that's a really, like, you're so focused on that in the game. Well, let's, and let's now that's that easier to achieve. A really cool thing about, about this game is that now uh, you have your normal uh, five action cards and you are going oh, right. to draft yeah. three new 
action cards that are beefed up versions of the basic action slightly cards. beefed up yeah yeah just just slightly but but, but it made a huge difference which by the way is something we never mentioned about great western trail new zealand there's this wonderful little tiny little thing that's fantastic which is you're going to have to put one of your discs onto the the oh right part the, of your initial setup the yeah. the wayfarer the, the 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 bird space and move it up there and you get to choose which disc you're you specializing pull off. right off the bat yeah that kind of like you've accelerated your engine in this game in a way that the basic game you, you can't yeah. right? and and it could be any one of a, a wide variety of discs you that can you're decide using. I'm Sheeran from step one correct right. yeah you could you can spend money to give yourself a permanent certificate right from the get go. You could, um, you know, unlock a a second money for you know to have a double you know a, a double auxiliary action mm-hmm. right off the the get go. H- having that tiny little bit of specialization at the very beginning of the game just really made made me smile. It, w- it was great in Marine Worlds, Ark Nova Marine Worlds. It is very much that way. You're looking at three th- three things that are. None of them are game breaking. They're all small little additions, but those additions can add up. Th- those can be mm-hmm. pretty great. Like, do you remember what any of yours were? What? Oh, um, like I could say I had a cards one that I, I switched my cards one, and now on the uh, on the uh, now I could snap a card at power three, four, or five, right. and on the flip side, if I got up to five, I could snap two cards from the display, right? Which was cool. It was really, it was really interesting. Yeah, you're making some pretty big decisions about your strategy of like. Generally, one of the big things you do in uh, in Arc Nova is what are the actions I'm going to upgrade and in what order. And yeah. this kind of pushes you in that direction from the get go, where you have to make some certain decisions. Like, am I going to be a card drawer or am, or am I playing that central board uh, type of thing? Like, I think I had one where like if I take an associate action and I do it at a value higher than I needed to, I get an X. Um, which ended up meaning actually that I was like almost always doing that. So, yeah. You know, any other, you know, so Why wouldn't I you? had a nice X action. And then later on, I had some cards that were rewarding me for the X's I had in my inventory. If you remember, I was taking like uh, association actions of placing the additional cube to get um, reputation. Like I was almost paying nothing yeah, yeah, for yeah, that yeah, because yeah. I had both a lot of X's and for every research icon I had. So it just suddenly things were comboing more. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, and, and and that's what I was seeing as and well. And sometimes that, that's part of your frustration in Arc Nova. It's like I have these cards, but they're not really working together here. And I think they've given you more tools to make the the cards work together now. So you're not just stymied by your card draw. Like there's stuff out there that you can choose. Yeah. Now, now more to, to specialize, including a new yeah. university, for example, that's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A university that that does some very cool things that actually unlocks one of five different universities that you're actually choosing, which is going to uh, power up one but of also the varieties like, of animals. Be like, okay, I'm going to, you know, uh, hey, here's a predator icon, but it also I'm going to draw until I get a predator. Yeah. So it's like you're, it's allowing your like now I have got a second predator to play, and if one of the and Which, by the way, it makes those basic uh, those base uh, conservation actions uh, much more achievable early. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there are also new rewards so we'll on the conservation. This. Yeah, we'll, but we we'll, had a we'll, we had we'll a great review. initial play. I got to think that's on the on the border, and then um, Voidfold's got to be coming. Yeah, as I, soon think, as I think it's coming. We're getting copies soon, yeah. this week, so that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to be in the pipe. So we'll be going on with that soon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, have a very active Discord, and we have an active uh, Facebook account as well. Uh, yeah, talk to us there. We, we got some, like, somebody who wrote us uh, some very nice things recently. We we appreciate uh, when you guys appreciate us. We we love getting corrections. We love getting questions. So all of that is, is totally, utterly welcome. And, uh, yeah, we also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Game Brain Pod. Um, and you've been listening to Game Brain, produced and edited by Matthew Robinson, Tom Donnelly, Trey Alsop, and Ben Mandelker. Special thanks to Daedalus for our incredible music. More on Daedalus at GameBrainPod.com and Edmar Peleg for our incredible graphics. Kerbaloni is where you can find him. Uh, you can reach us by email at contact at GameBrainPod.com or on Twitter at GameBrain underscore pod. Thanks for listening and go play some games with friends or make some friends with games.